Chapter 3 The Cabin Earlier that day, before it had started to rain, and before Aunt Sally Pry fell into the gutter, Jimmy Bigfish and his sister Sunshine had slipped quietly around to the backyard of the Bobsey twins' home. The half-Indian boy and his sister had a habit of going about very quietly, making hardly any sounds. In this they were like their father, Chief Big Fish, who at one time had been what is called a wild Indian, though he did not take part in any wars or fighting. Bert and Nan had been expecting Jimmy and his sister to call, for the day before the dark-skinned children had promised to come and tell Bert and Nan a secret. So, though the older Bobsey twins were looking for their friends, so quietly had Jimmy and Sunshine appeared that Bert was startled and Nan jumped. Oh, she cried nervously. Oh, dear. Did I scare you? asked Jimmy, laughing. We didn't mean to, said Sunshine with a smile. No, you didn't exactly scare me, answered Nan, also smiling. But you came along like shadows, chuckled Bert. Indian heap quiet, said Jimmy, pretending to talk as if he did not know English very well. I wish I could learn to walk as quietly as you do, said Bert. I'd sneak up on some of the fellows and surprise them. Speaking of surprises, went on Nan, what's the secret you are going to tell us, Sunshine? And she made room for the Indian girl to sit down beside her on the steps. Oh, it isn't much of a surprise, stated Sunshine. But Jimmy and I discovered a big patch of huckleberries beyond the woods, and we thought, this being Saturday, you two would like to pick up a lot so your mother or Dinah could make pies. Oh, sure, that would be fine, cried Bert. Dad's very fond of huckleberry pie, and Dinah makes them swell. We sure will like to get some. That's what I thought, said Jimmy. I didn't want to blurt it out yesterday before all the fellows, for if I had, they might skin the bushes. That's why I said I'd be over this morning. Can you and Nan come now? Sure, said Bert. Just as Bert and his sister were starting off with the Indian boy and girl, Flossie and Freddie appeared at the back door. Where are you going? Freddie demanded. Take us with you, begged Flossie. We can't, answered Bert. It's to be a big surprise. You'll see when we come home, promised Nan. The older twins knew the tramp to the huckleberry patch beyond the woods would be long and hard for Flossie and Freddie. So, though the little boy and girl teased pleadingly to be taken along, they were not allowed to go. Thus it was that Bert and Nan had gone away that morning, saying nothing to their mother, Dinah, nor Sam about what the secret surprise was to be. Mr. Bobsey, of course, was at his office in the lumber yard. Won't Mother be surprised when we come back with berries for lots of pies? asked Nan of her brother as they trudged along. Sure, he said. Does Dinah make good pies? asked Jimmy Big Fish. You ought to taste them. Yum, yum. And Bert smacked his lips. We'll give you one after it's baked, offered Nan. Oh, thanks. But I didn't ask on that account, said Jimmy quickly. That's all right. You'll be entitled to a pie if you show us where the huckleberries grow, said Bert. The children tramped over the fields and through the patch of woods, on the farther side of which, the Indian boy said, the huckleberries grew thick in a half-hidden place, known to few, if any, of the other lads around Lakeport. How'd you come to know about this place, Jimmy? asked Bert of his Indian chum as they walked along together, leaving the girls to come behind them. Oh, I saw the bushes this spring when I was scouting around the country, Jimmy answered. I sized up the place, and I could tell that there wouldn't be many fellows who would go there, so I kept quiet about it and waited for the berries to get ripe. I was over there the other day, and they were just turning. Were there any signs of anybody having been around the place the last time you were there? Bert wanted to know. Maybe the berries will all be picked. I don't think so, the Indian boy answered. Oh, cried Nan, jumping suddenly to one side as she passed a clump of grass at the edge of the woods. What's the matter? her brother asked, turning quickly to look at her. Oh, a snake, gasped Nan. Ha ha, laughed Jimmy. It's only a rabbit, and he's worse scared than you are, Nan. Look, 
There he goes. It was true enough. Nan had almost stepped on a little brown bunny that was hiding in the clump of grass, and it had darted away from beneath her feet as a snake might have done. No use to be afraid of the snakes around here, even if you saw one, said Jimmy, as they went on after watching the rabbit run to another and safer hiding place. Won't they bite? asked Nan. They might bite if you corner them, answered the Indian boy, but their bite wouldn't do any harm. There are no poisonous snakes around here. Well, poisonous or not, I don't like them, declared Nan. I don't much either, admitted Sunshine. The boys laughed, as boys will, at their sisters, and then they all hurried on. In a short while, they were in a little grassy dell, around the edges of which were many low bushes. It did not take long for the children to find out that the bushes were well laden with the blue huckleberries. Oh, what a lot, cried Nan. Enough for a hundred pies, shouted Bert. I guess Dinah would be a long time baking a hundred pies, laughed Sunshine. Nobody has been here, said Jimmy, with a look around which told him none of the bushes had been disturbed. We'll have this place to ourselves. The children began filling their pails with the berries. At first, the little blue balls rattled noisily on the bottoms of the tin buckets. Then, as the bottoms were covered, the berries fell more quietly. My pail's half full already, announced Nan after a while. So's mine, said Bert. Sunshine gave a sudden start and looked up at the sky. What's the matter? asked her brother. Rain, was the answer. Oh, cried Nan, as the first few drops were quickly followed by more and more until there was a regular deluge. Oh, what are we going to do? Well, we can't stop it, said Bert with a chuckle. He didn't much mind a wedding. Neither did Jimmy nor Sunshine. But we'll get soaked, cried Nan. Isn't there a house anywhere around here that we could go to? Jimmy shook his head as he turned up his coat collar. No house, he answered. What about the old cabin, asked Sunshine. What cabin, asked Bert. Oh, that's right, exclaimed Jimmy. I was almost forgetting. Come on, he cried, and he made a dash for an opening in the bushes. We'll go to the cabin. Come on. Not knowing where they were going and wondering what cabin the Indian children could have in mind, Bert and Nan followed, Sunshine holding Nan's hand. They ran fast. At the same time, they tried not to let the berries spill out of their pails. Harder and harder, the rain came down. End of chapter 3